Hello, Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. So I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison here. Um, it is my birthday, so happy birthday to me. So I've got my free Starbucks birthday drink here. Um, so, sorry, I'm not trying to advertise for Starbucks, but um, I will redeem a free birthday Starbucks drink. Not that I won't buy Starbucks beverages otherwise, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I've got my tripod sitting on the table, which I normally don't do something like that. So I don't know exactly. This is not going to be quite as comfortable as my normal situation. <laughs> so I wanted to compare the iPod Classic. This is the sixth generation, 160 gigabyte to the Theo X3 second generation. So, there's this baby playing a song right now. There's this baby playing a song right now. Um, so that's what the software differences look like. Um, actually, a better comparison would be if I used a song that I know has artwork on this album on this device, sorry. So, there's the differences in what you're viewing while you're watching. This is at full brightness. I guess to give you a good comparison, I should put this one at full brightness. I'm not used to using it with my left hand, which is weird because I'm left-handed. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, settings, brightness, okay. It's a zero percent. Okay, so I gotta say, comparison-wise, the brightness is definitely better on the iPod Classic, for sure, no doubt. Um, let's try. I think I'm also gonna turn the display, make the display so it doesn't time out while I'm talking here. Mm -mm -mm. Backlight. Always on. Let's see if I can do that with this one too. So, brightness-wise, the um, Fio X3 second generation is definitely more difficult to see in the daylight. In fact, it is pretty dark in the daylight. Sorry, this is going to be easier for me to hold it like this. As far as thickness-wise, the, um, the Fio is thicker, but the Classic is slightly taller. Software wise, I pref I don't I like the, the usability, the interface on the Theo is pretty nice actually. So here's just the main screen. You've got your now playing categories. Under categories are songs, albums, artists. Sorry, there's a hair on there. Genres, favorites, and playlists. Then you've got browsing files, which is more, just more straight up, like here are the albums in alphabetical order right here, or the folders. Right now I just have a four gigabyte card in here, so I don't, so most of them are organized by album because basically I just threw 10 albums on there and that's about all I did. Then you've got play settings. Under play settings, there's, um, Play mode, which of course can be just regular, straight up playing through an album or a folder. Then repeat, repeat one, and of course shuffle. 
resume mode. That's interesting because basically when you turn the player on, it can either resume playing from the position that you were in in the last song you were in, or it can just start from scratch every time and not even resume, or it can resume by song. Gapless playback, maximum volume so you can set it so it's not too loud. Default volume can be set by memory or custom. So memory would just be the last volume that it was at. Fixed volume. You can have set your gain to low or high, which is great if you have a, a more powerful set of headphones that needs a higher gain. And you've got your equalizer. Um, it's got a few different options, which I, it's got rock, classical, jazz, pop, dance, vocal, blues, metal, and custom. But I, I just keep equalizers off 98% of the time. You can set the balance from left to right. You can play through folders, which I do want to do because, you know, why not? Oh, I didn't mean to turn that off trying to do the back button but I didn't uh, so that's the play settings and then you've got settings you can update your media library automatically um, or manually which is basically just scanning whatever is on the SD card for for what's on there you can either do that automatically or manually key lock settings I don't really know what this means Really? I think that just means when you push one of those buttons, it locks it. Screen timeout, brightness, idle standby, idle standby timer, sleep, sleep timer, multifunctional outputs. You can either set this to line out, which will be there, or coaxial out either way, which is still plugged into this port. USB mo mode, this is a really cool feature of the Theo most of the field players have this feature. You can either, the USB mode right now is set to storage, which is playing from the SD card, or you can hook it up to your computer via USB and set the, the USB mode to DAC. So that would mean that you would be playing music through your computer, bypassing the sound card in your computer and using this as your computer's DAC. And that's a really cool feature. I have only had this player for about 24 hours but I used this feature last night and it really does work as an excellent DAC. So this is a great option if you were thinking about getting a music player and you also want a DAC for your computer, but you don't want to pay two separate prices. Hey, this works for both of those things. Um, there's different themes. Um, I just like the first one, but it's got a couple of different like black options and then it's got this denim option and two different wood tone options so it just changes your color scheme throughout the player for whichever theme you choose oh this is pretty cool um, support inline headphone control so basically if you have the type of headphones that have inline controls the play functions work the Volume doesn't, but the play functions do. So I'm gonna actually plug this in right now to show you that it works. Playing through the headphones right now. You might be able to hear that. All right, so if I push pause. It's not doing it. Okay, there we go. Or is it not? I feel like it's not doing it. It worked yesterday when I tried it. Let's go to the now playing screen. That is odd that it's not working. Let's plug it in again. There we go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and it can also do, you know, skip a track, went to the next track, or it can go um, to the previous track. 
There you go. So that's really great that it can do that. So if you're used to Apple products, um, you can still use your headphones that have controls on them if you want. So um, that's kind of the overview of the software. I'm not gonna go over software of an iPod because you guys, you guys know how iPod software works. Um, personally, as far as um, functionality of the device, I kind of enjoy I'm gonna actually turn the brightness back down on this. You guys have seen how that works. Because it's just a little too bright. There we go, better. So I'm trying to get, do a good comparison here, but I feel like I'm all over the place as per usual, but you guys are used to it. I kind of enjoy the sensation of this, this little click wheel. I'm gonna bring this up close to the speaker so you can hear it. Because it's not an actual, it's not touch sensitive like the iPod controls are. You're actually clicking it with your finger. And I like that, personally. Um, I think it's fun. Um, I also like the just now playing screen better on the Fio because it just does the artwork full screen, no nonsense. It's got a couple of extra like settings on there. Like I don't really need to know that the EQ is off, but I like it better than the, I've never liked on the iPods how it's got that sort of like sideways album artwork situation going on. I don't really like that very much. Um, that's just how I feel about it. Um, if you're coming from an iPod world and going to a Theo, it, um, it's an easy software, hardware situation to get used to. I have um, only had this thing for 24 hours, like I said, and I have had no problems getting used to um, just the little, you've got a little menu button right there. And if you're in a track, you press the little menu button and you've got options here. You can heart the song, you can add it to a playlist, shuffle, regular, repeat, repeat one, or just trash the track if you don't want it. So those options are all there. Um, so it's got that menu button, it's got this little back button, it's got the previous track, future track, it's got this nice little blue indicator that the player is on. You've got your volume and your power. One other really cool thing about this player, I think, is that it has a separate headphone and line out functionality. So that means basically whenever you're hooking up to something other than headphones, using the line out, you can still use the headphone um, like you would if you were hooking an iPod up to something. You can still do that if you wish but um, it works much better to do the line out because that way you can use the volume on whatever device and you don't have to worry about messing with the volume on this because it actually doesn't work anymore on line out mode. Um, and it just sounds a lot better. I have already used this in the 24 hours I've had it. I've used it with my, um, my stereo, my at home, like. Serious Hi-Fi Stereo works great. I have also used it in DAC mode with my computer and it works great. So um, the only problems with this player basically are um, you have to download a $20 app to sync your music with this baby the same kind of way that you would sync your music with this baby. <laughs> so. Um, it's called Dapper. If you have a Mac and you're used to using iTunes to sync with your devices, Dapper is basically the app that you would want to use for that. I personally haven't used it yet, but I've watched a lot of tutorials on it online and I think it's going to work really great. Um, basically that way you can sync all your playlists to your, to your non-iPod Dapp and it can sync. It's got a lot of functionality of like personalizing how you want to sync your device which you would never have all those options with an iPod, of course. But you can basically set it up to sync the same way you would sync an iPod, so that every time you plug it in, it syncs whatever is 
has been recently added or however you want to do it. Um, so I'm really excited to use that software actually, but I'm waiting until um, I get my 200 gigabyte SD card so I can put my whole library on here. Um, that's another downside to this device is that when you buy it, you do have to buy a separate SD card. But the cool thing about that is that you can buy an SD card as big as you want. And um, I think 200 gigabyte is the biggest micro SD card that exists right now. So it, um, it's supposed to be able to handle that according to a forum I read. So we'll see if that works, but I think it should. There's no reason why it wouldn't. Um, so cost wise, I bought this iPod Classic five years ago for $250. This um, you can get on eBay for about $150, um, and then you have to buy the SD card, which if you're gonna get, I mean, that can vary, of course. If you're just gonna get a 32 gigabyte SD card, you could get it for like 15 bucks probably. But um, mine, the $200, or the 200 gigabyte one that I got cost $70, so, um, they, so they're so they kind of comparable in price. I even though this is five years old, I'm pretty sure since Apple products hardly ever lose their value, I'm pretty sure you would still be paying close to at least $200, maybe more since this isn't in production anymore. As far as sound quality, which hey, that's the important part, right? Sound quality, quality, bleh, quality with these babies, this one's better. Um, there's just, no question for me listening to this one. Um, you can get comparable sound quality with just like hooking up a little amp, a little like headphone amp or something to um, the iPod Classic. You can get the same quality out of it that way. But um, it's just on this, it's louder, cleaner, crisper, more detailed, um, but with all that said, unless I was sitting there comparing like I was, I mean, I was listening to like 30 seconds of a song on this and then the same 30 seconds on this and then the same thing with a different song, you know, just flipping back and forth. If I wasn't doing that, would I be able to say for sure? Would I really be thinking that this was inferior? No. So if you already have an iPod Classic, you know, it's not a bad device, especially if you have, I've heard that, the iPod Classic 5.5 generation and 7th generation are actually better. This one is the 6th generation. I've heard the 5.5 generation has is like the one that all the audiophiles online covet because it's easy to take apart. It already has a great DAC in it. Um, so if you already have something like that, you know, be happy with it. I, I still maintain that the best audio device is the one that you have already. So I was lucky enough to receive this as a birthday present um, from my Michael. And he <laughs> had part of the reason he gave me a new device that I really coveted is because he coveted my iPod Classic and he knew that I would give it to him if I preferred this. And since I do, he now has a new iPod. So um, it worked out great. And I had an old, because I love putting this kind of case, this kind of skin, this is a picture that I took with my own cassettes back in the day. Um, or I took the picture more recently, but my cassettes are cassettes that have been in my life forever. In fact, I have this dreaming cassette tattooed on my body. So it will be with me forever. So this is the same like skin that I use for everything. And I had an old um, piece of a skin that used to be on an old phone and it still was sticky enough that I could modify it and put it on this. So I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, okay, so I've compared. Doo -doo -doo. Brightness is kind of a problem. Syncing is a little bit more difficult on this guy. Um, what else can I compare? As far as I know, I, I'm a Last.fm user. I scrabble, which means um, the data of the songs that you listen to goes to Last.fm and you can look at your stats of which songs you listen to the most and blah, blah, blah. As far as I know, there's not a way to scrabble from a non-iPod non type DAP 
digital audio player. So that is kind of disappointing to me, but other than that, I'm really happy with this guy. You can even actually, I just looked it up because I have a three different iPod docks in my house. I have one that's connected to my alarm clock, one that's in the bathroom, just connected to like a cheap little boom box. So that's not a big deal. And I have one that is connected to my um, fancy stereo. Um, and I looked online today and Fio actually makes a little, a little dock for um, their players. So I think I'm gonna buy it. It's, um, it's only like 20 bucks on eBay. So I'm gonna buy it so I can have a nice little pretty dock to put this in next to my stereo. Um, the design, I would have to say both of these designs are great. It just depends on which you prefer, really. I like this approach a little bit better because I like the buttons. I like there being lots of buttons and I like the physical sensation of clicking these, um, clicking through menus and stuff. But, I mean, nothing wrong with an iPod either. Um, okay, so let's design. Oh, another cool thing, the volume on the Theo. It goes all the way up to 120, and this is like tiny, tiny increments of sound. So I think that's kind of cool because you can get the exact volume that you want. Sometimes I feel like um, with an iPod or many other devices, you just kind of like one step between, you know, like a volume eight and a volume nine is just too much. You need like the 8.5, you know what I'm saying? Well, this one has very precise, so you can really get in there and get exactly the volume that you want on the Theo. Um, how else can I compare these guys? Um, Weight-wise, I feel like they both weigh about the same. Maybe the iPod weighs a tiny bit more. But um, as far as functionality, the Theo has got a ton of functionality. Um, sorry, I've got cat hairs all over my kitchen table. Because <laughs> she lays up here a lot. Because um, it can be used as a DAC, it can be used with a coaxial or a line out, it can power pretty powerful headphones. Um, you can have multiple SD cards if you want, you know, like. You could have A through F on one 200 gigabyte card and like the rest of the alphabet on another 200 gigabyte card and you could switch them out. So um, overall, I'm really happy with both of these players and so I'm, I'm really glad to have this one as a birthday gift and I will continue to test it and let me know if you have any questions. I still haven't used the Dapper software, so I don't know for sure um, how well that works, but I've seen it in use in a lot of YouTube videos. I think it's gonna work just fine um, and I'm gonna be really happy to use that. Um, trying to think what other comparisons I might wanna make for these two players. Um, I think overall, cost-wise, you're going to pay less for the Theo, um, and Theo has a lot of different options. They have an X1 that's like $100 or less. Um, this is the X3, second generation. Um, there's an X5, which costs a lot more, like maybe $200 or more. Um, but the, thing, the cool thing about the X5 is it has two slots for micro SD cards. So you could potentially have 400 gigabytes of music in the same device, and that's pretty amazing. Um, the other thing that was a little difficult for me to get used to, since I'm used to this iPod, um, with this iPod you can lock all of the controls by just you know flipping that little switch there, just like with any iPod. With this, the way that it, it just kind of automatically locks, depending on when you set it, um, and you just press the power button on the side to unlock it. So um, when the screen locks and it's dark, you can't push any buttons. So that was weird for me to get used to at first because I have to press the power button first before I can press play or pause. But um, I did get used to that pretty quickly, not bad. So yeah, there we go. If you're thinking about buying one or the other of these, 
Um, I'd say go with this one. It's going to be a little bit more cost effective, but if but some of the software type stuff is a little bit more difficult to use, more difficult to navigate. Um, so if you're used to using iTunes and you can get your hands on an iPod for cheaper than you can um, with an Theo, and you're not like super into the best possible quality sound you could get your hands on, then an iPod Classic is gonna work just fine for you. There's no problems with that. So that's how I feel about the iPod Classic versus the Fio X3 second generation. Um, just design-wise, I think this thing is so cute. It looks like a little record player. Like, do you see that? And it's um, aluminum, it's all metal, it feels really classy. All the buttons have like these little grooves on them. Let's see if you can see it with the, it's easier to see with this big button but it's like a little circular groove situation going on here. It's great, it's awesome. Anyway, um, I really like also that this is just a dedicated music device. You know, there's no fancy anything on this. It's just music. You got lots of music settings, ways to play your music. It doesn't have a clock, it doesn't have gains, it doesn't have any extra features, like weird things that you never use, like timers and shit like the iPod does. Um, it's just a player, which is pretty cool, I think. So um, that's how I feel about that. Um, I really, really like this Fio X3, but honestly, both of these are great players, so it just depends on which one has the functionality that you want. Um, have a great day, guys. I will see you next video. Bye!